body has mechanisms to change the intensity of pain which we perceive and that is uh, given by gait control theory and descending analgesic pathway so in brief first we'll see the pain pathways and directly we will move on to these theories so first is fast pain pathway actually pain is of two types slow pain and fast pain and so we have uh, two different pathways which carry these types of pain fast pain pathway starts by the a delta fibers so a delta fibers form the first order neuron they make contact to another neuron in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord so there is a relay here a synapse occurs and then from the dorsal horn of the spinal cord second order neuron arises which crosses to the opposite side anterior to the central canal so here there is crossing and it ascends as the lateral spinothalamic tract and because this is fast pain pathway which is evolutionary new this is known as new spinothalamic tract new spinothalamic tract and as it ascends into the lateral spinothalamic tract it uh, ascends into the medulla then pons midbrain and finally it reaches to the thalamus and relays there in the ventral posterolateral nucleus of the thalamus so that is the second order neuron and third order neuron arises from this nucleus and reaches to the somatosensory area 1 which is located in the cortex posterior to the central sulcus so these are the three neurons of the fast pain pathway just to differentiate it from slow pain pathway try to remember few things here one that the first order neuron is the a delta fibers which are faster fibers and are myelinated then in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord actually we have various lamina the neurons are arranged and we can see in histological section as various lamina and there are 1 to 6 lamina in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and this a delta fibers synapse in lamina 1 2 and 5 of this dorsal horn and the neurotransmitter which is released at this level is glutamate so glutamate is the excitatory neurotransmitter and since this is fast pain pathway glutamate is a neurotransmitter which releases fast and acts fast fine then the second order neuron you see it gives certain collaterals to reticular formation and not much branches arise from this second order neuron very few branches are there and directly it reaches to vpl nucleus of the thalamus and then from vpn nucleus there is localized projection localized projection to the somatosensory area and this is responsible for the well localization of the site of the pain because there is point to point representation in the somatosensory area so there is localized projection to the somatosensory area so that is about fast pain pathway so remembering these key features we will look into the slow pain pathway So here this diagram is showing slow pain pathway and you see the basic scheme is same there is first order neuron right which synapses in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord then there is second order neuron which crosses at the level of the spinal cord and ascends in the lateral spinothalamic tract and reaches to the thalamus where again it synapses and the third order neuron arises from the thalamus and projects to the somatosensory area but there are very important key differences in the slow pain pathway when compared to the fast pain pathway and these include first one that the first order neuron is actually the c fibers and c fibers are the slow fibers and they are non myelinated fibers okay and that is the reason that uh, this is a slow pain pathway so this pain we perceived approximately 1 second after the injuries and this fast pain actually we perceived within 0.1 second of the injury okay so the time taken for the information to reach via the new spinothalamic tract is much faster compared to the slow pain pathway okay so c fibers non myelinated fibers secondly i talked about the lamina in the spinal cord well they synapse in lamina 1 and 2 in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and they release the neurotransmitter which is substance p okay so substance p is slow to release and also it slowly accumulates over the region and then it acts so it is slow to act also so that is the another difference 
third you see the number of collaterals which arise from this slow pathway are much more and the collateral go to the reticular formation periaqueductal gray matter and also it goes to the amygdala amygdala also uh, these uh, collaterals are going and that is very important because you see this reticular formation is the one which is responsible for keeping us awake so that is why when we are in pain we are not able to sleep properly right so these collaterals activate the reticular formation then it goes to amygdala and that is responsible for the emotional responses to the pain so when we compare it with other sensation pain is having some emotional component as well and thirdly it goes to hypothalamus as well hypothalamus and hypothalamus is responsible for the autonomic responses which occur with pain that is increase in the heart rate increase in blood pressure and also some other bodily responses like changes in the smooth muscle motility can occur so this is another huge difference when compared to fast pain pathway then another difference is that you see where it is synapsing in the thalamus in the thalamus it synapses with intralaminar nucleus of the thalamus actually this vpl nucleus which we saw in the fast pain pathway it is a specific nucleus okay while intralaminar nucleus is a non specific nucleus so signals from many sensations actually synapse in this intralaminar nucleus of thalamus non specifically and then again you see that the third order neuron actually there is diffuse projection to the somatosensory area here we said that it is localized projection here there is diffuse projection to the somatosensory area so slow pain is not responsible for well localization of the site of the pain rather it activates the somatosensory area in a very diffuse manner so that was in brief about the fast pain pathway and slow pain pathway fast pain pathway also known as the neo spinothalamic tract and slow pain pathway is evolutionary older so that is known as the paleo spinothalamic tract now let us move on to the modulation of pain and how it occurs so for modulation of the pain the key area is this dorsal horn of the spinal cord which is also known as substantia gelatinosa and in this area there is a interneuron okay so till now we were talking about first order neuron synapsing with the second order neuron but here there is a interneuron as well and there are mechanisms by which this interneuron is activated and inhibits this pathway so it inhibits the transmission of impulse into the second order neuron so let us see in detail that how this interneuron is activated and what is the neurotransmitter which is released by this interneuron very important so this is defined by gate control theory so let us just see quickly here the c fiber what is shown is the first order neuron and here this one is the second order neuron right and you see what is happening if there is a noxious stimulus that is the painful stimulus this first order neuron is activating the second order neuron and there will be the transmission of the impulse now this is the interneuron which i was talking about now you see that this interneuron actually inhibits this transmission and what it does that if we magnify the dorsal horn of the spinal cord it actually inhibits the presynaptic neuron okay here also it inhibits and it inhibits the postsynaptic neuron as well here also it inhibits okay so this is the presynaptic inhibition inhibition of the first order neuron and the inhibition of the second order neuron is the postsynaptic inhibition so this interneuron actually releases a neurotransmitter that is encephalin encephalin right and this encephalin acts on the receptors which are present on the presynaptic neuron and what happens that due to this activation of these receptors the presynaptic neuron releases less neurotransmitters so that there is less activation of the second order neuron so what we see that when these encephalins act on presynaptic neuron there is decreased opening of voltage gated calcium channels and when that happens there is decrease in the calcium influx in the presynaptic neuron and then obviously there will be decrease in the release of the neurotransmitters so postsynaptic neuron will be excited less so that is also kind of inhibition that is the presynaptic inhibition 
on the postsynaptic neuron when it acts on its receptors it opens voltage gated potassium channels so when potassium channels open potassium starts moving out of the cell so there is increase in the potassium efflux and once that happens it leads to direct inhibition because there will be decrease in the membrane potential okay positive ion that is the potassium is moving out so this decreases the potential that is what that is ipsp i have another video on epsp and ipsp please have a look on that as well so anyways so this decreases the potential so enkephalins act on presynaptic neuron as well as on the postsynaptic neuron that is a first order neuron as well as on the second order neuron so there should be some mechanism to activate this interneuron and then only the pain transmission will be decreased so how that happens that is defined by gate control theory and the descending analgesic system so you know that when we get hurt or maybe somewhere suppose we hit our thumb with a hammer so what do we do immediately we either shake our hand or rub the injured area and what happens that this actually reduces the intensity of the pain which we are perceiving and how it is happening this is because on rubbing which is a touch stimulus it activates a beta fibers and a beta fibers are the first order neurons for the touch stimulus so this a beta fibers which are basically large diameter myelinated fibers okay this is given in langer gasser classification a alpha a beta a gamma a delta fibers so a alpha have the largest diameter and are myelinated so all the neurons which come in the classification of a fibers they are myelinated so these a beta fibers are large diameter myelinated fibers okay and when they are stimulated you see what is happening there is excitation of this interneuron in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord which in turn is inhibiting this pain transmission so we say that the gate for transmission is being closed okay gate for transmission is being closed and that is why it is known as gate control theory that when this interneuron is not activated then the gate is open and pain transmission can occur but when this interneuron is activated by large diameter myelinated fibers that is a beta fibers then the gate closes and pain transmission decreases so that is first level of theory however it only explains that how rubbing the hand is decreasing the pain transmission basically this is a bottom up theory okay bottom up theory that from below at the level of the skin something is happening which is reducing the pain transmission but in our body another system is there that is the descending analgesic system which operates from above and what is that system that is basically an expansion of the gate control theory so here this diagram is showing this same interneuron which we saw before which was being activated by the a beta fibers now this neuron is also being activated by the signals which are coming from the top and these areas include periacuductal gray matter which is present in the midbrain okay midbrain and we saw that how this uh, periacuductal gray matter was also activated by the c fibers so it's like when the pain is being transmitted there is some activation of the periacuductal gray matter and itself it is causing the reduction of the pain anyways so this periacuductal gray matter when activated the signals from here reach to the two nuclei in the medulla that is nucleus raphe magnus and rostral ventrolateral medulla and these neurons release some neurotransmitters again so there is nucleus raphe magnus releasing serotonin and rostral ventrolateral medulla releases catecholamines by the way this pag releases enkephalins again the same neurotransmitter which is released by these interneurons right and then you see this nucleus raphe magnus and the rostral ventrolateral medulla neurons they are activating this interneuron which in turn releases the enkephalins and again closes the gate for pain transmission so basically in this descending analgesic system what you need to remember that there are three neurons one arising from the periacuductal gray matter which is present in the midbrain it releases enkephalins then from nucleus raphe magnus and rostral ventrolateral medulla both are present in medulla 
neurotransmitters are released that is serotonin and catecholamines respectively and these activate the interneuron present in the substantia gelatinosa of the spinal cord which releases the encephalins. So neurotransmitters released are encephalin, serotonin and then again encephalin. So this is what we say as descending analgesic system, descending analgesic system and this explains basically the reduction of uh, intensity of pain perception which happens uh, sometimes maybe due to distraction that suppose we are having a headache and when we get distracted the intensity of pain perception reduces. So that means there are signals coming from cortex as well to this periaqueductal grey matter. Then there are other scenarios as well which were first studied in case of soldiers like wounded soldiers when they were asked that uh, are they feeling pain. So during the time of the war they actually themselves were surprised that they were not feeling any pain. But when the war ended then they could feel the actual intensity of the pain. So again that is due to the activation of this descending analgesic system. And this is very important because this gate control theory and descending analgesic system are physiological basis of many treatments which are employed. For example, for reduction in the pain, for reduction in extreme pain, opioids are given. And these opioids act by activating this particular pathway that is the descending analgesic system. And this gate control theory explains how certain treatments like acupuncture, acupuncture and also TENS that is transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation are able to reduce the intensity of the pain because both of them target the activation of these A beta fibers which close the gate for the transmission of the pain. So that was all about the pain pathways and the modulation of the pain. I have another video on details of anterolateral spinothalamic tract. You can have a look on that as well. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, do press the like button, share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel Physiology Open. Thank you.